This is an experiment I did for you. I talk about it later in the video. A long time ago, car headlights were made of glass and we had no problem with it. But that was before. Today, and on almost all vehicles sold since the 2000s, the headlights are made of plastic, or called polycarbonate. And we have problems with them. They tarnish and they turn yellow. First it looks old and ugly, and after a while it doesn't illuminate perfectly. In this video I will show you how to make your headlights absolutely like new and achieve this. I will show you four different renovation methods, and then I will compare the results obtained. Let's go! Hello everyone, first of all the yellowed headlights are not dirty. Here I have a little soapy water on my glove, I scrub well. And I see that it clears up and that the transparency returns a little, cool, I rinse. Then I dry them. And once it dries well the tarnished look comes back. So it's not a dirty story. Okay. A new headlight consists of a thick layer of polycarbonate or transparent plastic and more or less thin and effective factory protection. There in my drawing, its thickness is voluntarily very exaggerated. Over time and external attacks, light, micro impacts, micro scratches, bad weather, and so on, the protective layer is damaged and leaves the polycarbonate unprotected. And without protection, the polycarbonate yellows and gradually loses its transparency. For the next, I scale my drawing. In fact, the protective layer is very thin, compared to that of polycarbonate. So in this bad luck, we are lucky, because the yellowing creates a new layer of protection which means that the material underneath remains protected, and that's what will make it possible to renovate the headlights. As the plastic which is under the yellowed layer is still completely transparent, we will be able to remove the upper layer to then find a headlight like new. Since I'm going to show you four different retrofit methods, I'm going to divide my headlights into four different areas. So the method on the far left, I save it for later. And for the moment I do not yet decide between the zones of the other three methods because these methods start with exactly the same steps. To do these operations either mask the outline of the headlights on your car, or either remove the headlights, and I advise you then to mask the rear and fix them as well. Before removing the yellowed surface, I will first look for scratches. I have one here. If you feel something as you run your fingernail, it's a scratch. And if you don't have scratches, you can go directly to the next step. Schematically, it's more like this. To remove the scratches, I will have to sand coarsely, it means with a coarse grit. I started with 180 grit by hand. To see better, I circle the scratch. Coarse sanding will consist of going from this to this. Here is the 180 grit paper. And I advise you not to sand with your fingers like that because you will apply the force only on the tips of your fingers and it is not uniform. To have a uniform pressure, I use flexible sander blocks like that. If you need links I put them below in the description of the video. This is referred to as dry sanding because I do not moisten either the paper or the surface to be sanded and I sand until the scratch is completely removed. Here the scratch has already disappeared, and of course now I have lots of micro scratches from sanding. The next grid I do by machine, that's an orbital sander. Orbital means that it makes a movement like that. Otherwise when the plate rotates it's a rotary sander. The advantage of the orbital sander is that area of the plate goes to the same speed. I'm now moving to 280 grit which is finer than 180. And I'm doing the area I just sanded and a bit around as well. I put the speed of the machine at minimum because the plastic heats up and it must not melt. Here it's not sanded. And it's sanded with 280 grit. Now I'm going to 400 grit. I sand the area already done and a little around it as well. Let's go. Here is the result. And to complete the step of removing the scratch, I finish at 500 grit.
Now I will work on the whole area to remove the layer protective film if any remains and the yellowed surface. The goal is to go from that to that. Basically I will sand as for the scratch, but I do not need such coarse sanding. I take a finer grit 600 and I'll see if that makes the yellowed surface disappear. I start with the other headlight that I haven't sanded yet. And here I see that it doesn't completely remove the yellow, so the grit is too fine. And it is very important that the yellow disappears completely at this stage because it will not disappear with the following steps. So I'm back down. I take the grit 500 and I resand the headlight. That's good. With 500 grit, the yellow has is completely disappear. And I finish the other headlight with 500 grit as well. Here is, now I'm at the same step of sanding everywhere. The goal then is to gradually increase the grit to make the sanding irregularities finer and finer. And as the plastic is a little hot, I will continue to sand but with water. The idea is that the surface to be sanded is always wet. And for that I use a sprayer with water. I'm taking the 600 grit from earlier and I'm going to moisten it. Make sure your sanding papers are compatible with wet sanding. As with the water it heats up much less, I can increase the speed of the machine. And when there's a lack of water, I put a little more. That's 600 grit in the water, it's over. I now go to 800 grit, and since I don't have any for my machine, I do it by hand with the flexible sanding block. and I continue to go up in grit, 1000 on the machine. And I go to 2000 grit, so yes there I changed machine. That's an orbital polisher, it has less torque than the sander but it turns a little faster and it is a little lighter. And I finish the sanding stage with 3000 grit with the machine. I rinse well before wiping. And here you see, when the headlights are still wet, it looks like the restoration is complete. But actually no, once dry, the surface is completely smooth, you can see through it but it is not completely transparent, there is still a slight opacity, as if there was a little fogging. And that will have to be removed too. So now I'll show you three different methods to make this surface completely transparent. Here, to compare the three methods that will make the surface completely transparent, I've divided the area into three. And I'm going to show you the first method, chemical polishing. Chemical polishing comes in the form of a briefcase like this. Here we will find a bottle of chemical polish, which is used by boiling it in this small kettle. And with this tip, we will apply the steam to the surface of the headlight to be polished. The steam will actually liquefy the surface polycarbonate of the headlight, which will smooth the surface completely. I show you. I pour the polish into the kettle. I have to put a little more than half of it, but it doesn't matter because you can recover the unused product at the end. The kettle is hot, and I first start by applying steam at the bottom and then back up. And do you see, the opacity that remained on the surface disappears as if by magic. That's it, I finished. I stop here, and we look at the result. The result is magnificent. The surface is completely transparent, like new. Now that we have seen how chemical polishing works, we will move on to the second method which also makes the surface completely transparent. We are not going to do a chemical polishing, but a mechanical polishing this time.
For that, we're going to take a mechanical polish that we're going to apply with the polisher. This polish is actually extremely fine abrasive paste. We are going to completely remove the irregularities of the 3000 grit sanding from earlier, which creates the slight surface opacity. I show you, I take my polisher and I put a pad for polishing. I apply a special mechanical polish for the headlights. I spread the product in low speed. Once it's spread out, I speed up the machine. Here is, now I just wipe with a microfiber cloth. On one side of the cloth, then on the other. We look at the result. I think it's perfect. Here was the scratch from earlier, it has completely disappeared. For me the result is magnificent, it is identical to that of chemical polishing. Here I am finished with the mechanical polishing. Now I go to the third method to make the surface transparent. Instead of liquefying or removing material, as in the two previous methods, we will fill in the irregularities of the 3000 sanding with a clear coat. First I clean the area well. I put a little soap on the glove. Rinsing. Drying. And as I don't want to overflow on what I have just done, I hide the areas of the previous methods. The clear coat is in a spray like this. It is a special clear coat for headlight. But beware, this clear coat does not hold on plastics, it's stupid. So you first have to apply a primer. It is this other spray there, which will allow the clear coat to adhere to the plastic. So we will start by applying the primer before applying the clear coat on top. Let's go. I agitate the primer for 2 minutes. So for the sprays, use them at a temperature between 15 and 25 degrees with dry weather without wind and dust. I will apply in a single pass. I always start the jet outside the zone, and I stay 10-15 centimeters from the surface. It shouldn't leak. Go. Here is the headlight has some opacity, a little milky, but that's normal. Now I have to wait for the dry primer to become transparent again, and there's about 40 minutes. That's it. 40 minutes have passed, the primer has become completely transparent. For the next step, I advise you to bring tweezers, if ever dust or insects come to stick on your beautiful clear coat. The clear coat is this spray there. It is a bi-component or 2K clear coat. Instead of it being an air-drying clear coat, it is a clear coat that hardens when mixed with a hardener. So inside the spray, there is a pocket of hardener that we will pierce by pressing on the rod there. And once the pocket is pierced, the hardener will mix with the clear coat. The advantage of the two component is that the clear coat will be much stronger than a single component clear coat which dries in the air. But there is a big drawback. Once the pocket is pierced, you have about 10 hours to use the spray and then it's finished. The clear coat will have hardened on the inside. Come on, I start by shaking the products for 2 minutes. Then I activate the spray can. I pierce the pocket of hardener like that. Here it is. And I mix the products for another 2 minutes. There you have a spray can that will normally allow you to make a pair of headlights, so I have more than enough to make half a headlight. I start with a thin coat of grip. I'm going to let it dry for a few minutes. And I'm getting ready for the top coat. It's the hardest to do. I have to make a shiny or wet, but without running. If it's too thick, it will run, and it's ugly, and if it's not thick enough, the headlight won't be completely transparent. To make the shine without running, I have to move forward regularly while keeping the same distance of 10-15 centimeters. Tell yourself that the top coat will hardly change its appearance when it dries. This is the final appearance that must be obtained immediately. Let's go.
There you go. It look wet. And I don't see any drips. The application of the clear coat is finished, I can remove the masking, and I will let everything harden. Now that we have seen the three methods with sanding then polishing or applying a clear coat, I will show you the last method on the far left. I remove the masking from the surprise method. Here we can clearly see the difference between an area to be renovated and an area renovated with chemical polishing. And so the last method of renovation that I propose to you to discover is the method of wipes. This is supposed to be very simple and fast, so I'm going to follow the instructions scrupulously and we'll see what happens. In the box there are three wipes, first a renovation wipe numbered 1. You have two wipes numbered 1, one for each headlight. I will only use one, this wipe, I unfold it and I will vigorously rub the surface with it. To have a good distribution of the support pressure, I use my flexible sander block. The wipe is turning a little yellow, you see. I continue. Then I have to rinse with water. Let's go. And I have to dry off with a paper towel. It is written that the result becomes opaque, I confirm it is indeed opaque. Now we are going to move on to wipe number 2. Here is wipe number 2 which should be used for a pair of headlights, and this one must not be unfolded, it must be applied without forcing it. And that's it, it's already over. Now we will be able to visually compare the four methods we have just done. Wipes, chemical polishing, mechanical polishing, and clear coat. I start with wipes. Then the surface is not completely smooth, and there is still a slight yellow tint. Chemical polishing. For me, it's really perfect. The surface is smooth, transparent like new. Then, mechanical polishing for me is the same. It's really beautiful. Identical to chemical polishing and the clear coat. The surface is slightly less smooth, there is a slight orange peel due to the spray effect. From very close it can be seen but if you step back a little bit, it is not seen at all. Frankly I find the result very good. I'll get back to you quickly. Wipes I would say average. Chemical polishing, perfect. Mechanical polishing, also perfect and clear coat, almost perfect. And now is the video over? Well no, the video is not over. Okay the headlights are renovated, but now what interests me is to know if it holds up over time. Will the headlights turn yellow and dull? Will one method last longer than another? Well that's what we're gonna see now. For starters I just left the headlights for a week in the dry, and I already notice a default in the method with the wipes. The result is slightly sticky after a week, there are small dust that stick to it, is not great. For the other methods nothing has changed in a week, so I could have left the headlights outside for several months or even several years to compare the behavior over time of each method, but that's not what I did. First I cleaned the headlights. And then the question is, what makes the surface yellow? Well in fact it is the ultraviolet emitted by the sun, so to do my test, I made this little assembly with tubes emitting ultraviolet rays. I place the headlights in front of the tubes. I turn on. And I cover it all, mostly because you don't have to look at ultraviolet directly. And off we go for the tanning session. And now we're going to wait several weeks and see how each zone has reacted to the ultraviolet rays. Here we are a few weeks later. So I hid the headlights so we could see the results one by one. You can see that I added one pair of tubes. This is simply to make the test take less time. I also changed the type of tube. For those who are interested, I put germicidal ultraviolet tubes. Come on, I start by discovering the area made with the wipes. Well it's not famous. 
It is yellowed and tarnished. Up close the opacity is completely back. Now I uncover the area made with the chemical polish. So concerning the chemical polishing, it is also tarnished but less than with the wipes, I show you closer. It's not terrible. It is also degraded but actually less than with the wipes. Now I discover the area made with mechanical polishing. Mechanical polishing. It's tarnished too. Perhaps very slightly less than chemical polishing. I take a closer look. There it is still very tarnished. And now we discover the method done with the clear coat. Let's get closer. So with the clear coat, the headlight has tarnished much less than with the other methods. There are still some traces and it's a little yellowed, but the area is still very transparent. I will summarize you by making a quick passage on the four methods. Wipes, opaque. Chemical polishing, opaque but less. Mechanical polishing, opaque but better. And clear coat. Despite some traces, it's still very transparent. Regarding the clear coat, I show you something else. The headlights that are on the car there, they were done with the clear coat method more than six years ago. If I put the other test headlights below, it's just to tell you that the headlights I recovered from the car breakers are exactly the same. It's a total coincidence. In more than six years, and even if it is parked under a shelter, this car has been used a lot without being protected and washed excessively. The headlights are not yellow at all and have remained well transparent. At the time I had put on a good coat of clear coat and it shows here. There's orange peel that I didn't remove and the headlight illuminates very well. Come on, to sum it all up, I made you a little table. The first criterion that I will compare between the four methods is the immediate visual result. Regarding the wipes, I find the result average. It remains slightly yellow and the surface is not completely smooth. The visual result of chemical polishing is perfect for me. It's completely transparent. And I put the same note to the method of mechanical polishing. The result is perfect. And concerning the clear coat, I put a lower note because there is still an orange peel. Of course we could do a poly lustration on the clear coat, but without polishing the result is still very good. I now move on to the second criterion, which is the difficulty of implementation. Regarding the wipes, well, it's extremely easy. Basically you unpack and rub. For the chemical polishing method, it is a bit more complicated. Even if the polishing itself is very simple, you still have to sand first. And for mechanical polishing you also have to sand, but machine polishing is a little more technical than chemical polishing. Then the clear coat is for me the most difficult method to achieve. After sanding, the coats of primer and clear coat must be applied correctly. The risk of defects such as drips, underfilled areas, or other problems related to the spray paint can spoil the result. Next criteria, the quantity of tools required. The wipes are very simple. You don't need any tools. Regarding the chemical polishing, you will need the sanding equipment and also add the small chemical polishing equipment. For mechanical polishing, the same. You need sanding equipment and polishing equipment if for you as for me it is not the same machine. Finally the clear coat, you also need the sanding equipment. And that's it. I consider spray can as consumable. Following criteria, resistance over time. Regarding the wipes, it's very simple. It doesn't hold up over time. For chemical polishing, it also doesn't hold up over time, although it seems a little better than the wipe method. And mechanical polishing. Even if it doesn't really hold, it lasts maybe a little longer than chemical polishing. And finally, the clear coat. So I almost gave it 5 out of 5 but I gave it 4 out of 5 because in my ultraviolet test, the area deteriorated a little bit anyway. But you should know that the test I did with the germicidal tubes is more aggressive than sunlight. Whereas on the contrary on the headlights of the car that I have just shown you, it has not moved in 6 years. And finally the price. And I'm going to talk about the price excluding tools of course. The wipes are not given I find, especially given the results. But it's still a very affordable method, especially if you don't have the tools to do the other methods. For chemical polishing, consumables are very inexpensive. These are sanding discs and chemical polish. Same for mechanical polishing, consumables are not expensive either. You just replace chemical polish with abrasive polish. Finally, the clear coat method is the most expensive because the spray cans are expensive and are only used once for a maximum of two headlights. There you go. This video is now over and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want my opinion, I would advise you to do or have done the method with the clear coat to have a permanent result. However, professionals generally use the chemical or mechanical polishing method, which looks excellent but does not last very long. 
And yes, they like to see you coming back often. If you have any questions or remarks, don't hesitate to write in the comments. I have put in the description links to the products and tools that I used, and if you like this content feel free to drop a thumbs up, share the video or subscribe to the channel whichever method you use. I wish you good headlight restoration and see you soon on Enjoy Wheels.